All right, guys, how's it going back again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Valorant News and loads of stuff going on these last 24 hours. It seems like 100 Thieves may have found their fifth player. No rumors coming out as of yet who it might potentially be, but Ethan definitely hinting they have found their full roster. Very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and it's the best thing you can do. Tell this channel to reach new people. Uh, please do subscribe as well if you have not yet already. Loads of new subs. I say this every single day, but um, it still does blow my mind how quickly the channel is growing so thank you very much indeed firstly this from frs talking about giants gaming we saw of course their entire team got gutted effectively with g2 making the roster changes they were making this is the roster they seem to be going in with but uh, many other roster things to talk about because well it's no real surprise right here given we are in january and um well things are just around the corner of starting it for the vct 2022 this also from evil geniuses right of course a big organization but an organization that really hasn't had much success in valorant so far roca and Brante. They are apparently out of the roster. They've benched both those players. The team is currently trialing replacements, says Purist right here. This then goes on to get confirmed, at least to some degree, by Roka. And he says, you know, Evil Genius is kind enough to release me early for my contract so I can pursue other opportunities. With that being said, I am looking for a new team. So maybe benched or maybe just completely dropped from the roster. But um, of course, well, apparently they're going to release him from the contract so he can explore some other options there as well. But uh, yeah, many changes in the North American side. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a couple of seconds. But firstly, I wanted to to mention the European 2022 VCT, kind of the open qualifiers that are going on right here. So this is a kind of an update from Riot about, um, well, how the season is going to be structured, at least in the European side. Now, I'm going to kind of give some updates right here on the open qualifiers that are going on starting on the 10th of January. Then, of course, the winners of that go into the closed qualifier and then after the two closed qualifiers, after the two open qualifiers concludes, they then have the teams for the closed qualifiers that then qualify for the actual, you know, challenges and beyond through the season. Of course, anyone can actually go along to these things. So, Cool to see the update really here. There was some talk whether this is a good idea because um, the entire season, the regular season begins on February the 11th with 12 teams, four representatives of course from champions and then eight teams determined by the open and the closed qualifiers. And um, this is kind of like the summary of things right to so the open qualifier, single elimination, best of three, top four go to the closed qualifier. Then the closed qualifier is double elim, four teams directly invited. The deciding matches will be best of five in that one. So that's pretty cool to be honest. It definitely should mean that the best teams get out into kind of the, the 12 team regular season type stuff and then um, well there'll be two groups of six teams each group will play single round robin with best of three matches top three in each group make it to playoffs bottom team of each group will play in the promotion tournament with the winners of the Valorant regional leagues so um, well makes a fair bit of sense honestly decent format I think all things considered right here but what it does mean is that a lot of rosters have to sign up for this open qualifier that is starting in less than a week's time on the 10th of January now this means they have to sign up right and they have to put their team in which you can pretty much go through and find all these rosters that are being formed. So for example, this team right we saw with Yasin and Bonka, they're going to build this roster that you can see right here on screen, the young team is, is going to be described as. But it seems like this might be the kind of multinational roster they might be going for. There was also a few other ones. I'll just kind of scroll through for you guys if you guys want to pause things and figure things out. Excel's team potentially getting confirmed. This kind of a French roster right here, the Giants gaming team that we looked at earlier up, right, which seems to have now been confirmed at least based on who is signing up for this tournament. And um, I mean, yes, yeah, so many rosters right actually having to sign up here and uh, figuring out what their roster has to be. Also, there's some see Gen right just to finish things off but those are most of the rosters really in the European region that are yet to be confirmed this also from KOI Koi Esports I suppose now um this I thought was quite interesting because Hyber was a player that was linked a Finnish player to Fnatic right they're looking to replace Doma on their roster and they're looking to make some other changes as well in terms of what the well the composition effectively is going to be of their team but Hyber was a player who was linked actually to Fnatic so seems like that has not gone through at least according to this report at the present time now this also that comes out from Ghost Gaming last Last night, a couple of releases they make. Not exactly sure how to pronounce this fella's name. Maybe, maybe Huin or something. I'm not exactly 100% uh, sure. Like, my pronunciation isn't the best. You guys know at this point. But, um, you know, looking for a team at free agent officially released from Ghost Gaming. So, um, well, definitely a player that, uh, well, had some highs most certainly, but since then has not been so good. And, uh, well, this also from Chase also released from Ghost Gaming. So, they're making some moves. So many organizations making moves, as you guys are familiar with at this point. So, this then from 100 Thieves Ethan. At first day of practice today, he's says, feels like I'm back at school seeing my friends for the first time after a break, which of course, well, is fairly true, I guess, given that the fact that they've had to wait quite some time. Nitro seems to have gone to Counter-Strike. They're looking for a new in-game leader in Eccles, apparently, who has been confirmed to be joining. So it's Ethan, it's Hiko, it's Asuna, it's Eccles, and then, well, it's plus one. Now, um, we kind of were wondering, who is this plus one actually going to be? Is it going to be someone from North America they can't get? Is it going to have to be some player from Europe that they snag? But um, apparently, if they're playing practice here, does that mean, like, I guess they could theoretically practice 
practice with a player if he's still in Europe and hasn't yet got out to the States? Or is it more likely that um, they've actually managed to get one from the US, so you're a North American player itself? So, um, you know, really interesting, frankly. But uh, it does seem like, as Ethan's suggesting, first day of practice, it seems like they do have a fifth, unless for whatever reason they're playing with, um, you know, someone who is just like a substitute for whatever for a short period of time. Now, um, of course, as we kind of discussed yesterday, if this seven move to T1 hasn't gone through, maybe that's what they're going to go for here. Because uh, I guess they could get seven in for practice relatively quickly. If the move to T1 completely did collapse, I don't, well, with the new IGL in the team as well with the other guys, that might make a fair bit of sense. But uh, of course, people have been basing about it, right? Like uh, we did in the reply right earlier, like, get in TS, bro. You're late, he says. But of course, uh, well, like, we imagine that's not going to be the case. And uh, well, this also from what can join 100 Thieves subs as a, you know, sooner can I join 100 Thieves and uh, well, sure as well. So yes, definitely, um, well, players trying to do their best to join this organization, probably not going to happen all that easily. But uh, it does seem like this organization has actually found a fifth player. Now, um, as I say, the likely it is probably that Seven, who has, well, kind of talked about not being ready for their roster, but at the same time, if it's so difficult for them actually to find a fifth player from anywhere, then maybe Seven is the guy on their bench, only 16 years old, that you think, okay, let's just give him a go in the starting team under a new IGL and see what happens going into this year and give that kind of maybe star talent that at times they might have been a little bit missing, but also a guy that's uh, very maybe willing to listen to leadership rights because um, maybe some of the issues that were being had before was that when Steel was the IGL and, um, well, some of the guys maybe had different mindsets on how they wanted to play the game. Success at times, but at fell short at other times, maybe the idea would be to bring kind of a young guy who's easily moldable, but um, with a huge amount of talent behind him as well. Wouldn't be a bad idea, to be honest. But um, whether the composition could work as a result of that, I guess um, that's the question they will have to figure out in their practice over the coming days. This also from George Geddes, just to mention, because we talked a few days ago that he was going to be leaving Upcomer going into 2022. He's now doing his reporting over at Dot Esports, so congratulations to George, most certainly. I'm not sure what's going on with Upcomer really anymore, and um, Deserto also looking to try and get into things as well. Well, but yeah, big plays right now in the journalist side of things. But uh, yeah, a new investigative journalist for Dot Esports. Congratulations on this move, most certainly. But I'm sure the quality reporting is not going to stop anytime soon. This also from Upcomer, just to mention real quick, they were kind of doing the, the voting ready for the Champions Tour Player of the Year and stuff like this. Nats manages to win it from the Gambit side. This makes a fair bit of sense, to be honest, given the success that Gambit had. Not winning the Champions event, of course, but uh, towards the end of the tournament of Champions, he was a monster as well, as he has been pretty much the entirety of Valorant in 2021. So congratulations. Congratulations there. And well, just to finish up with this, I thought it was kind of interesting for Milad, who's a, well, an analyst for Ascend Rights going into the new year, kind of doing a power rankings type thing for the EMEA region. Now, um, of course, well, the, the S tier teams are the teams that attended champions in Ascend Gambit Liquids. And well, the other team was Fnatic, who find themselves all the way down here. Now, um, I don't know whether he's kind of thinking that uh, Fnatic are nowhere near as good, or he's just kind of having a laugh here and having a good time. Obviously, some of this is always going to be controversial when you put together a power rankings list like this. But again, uh, yeah, Fnatic down it also is kind of interesting whether he thinks that without Doma they're nowhere near as good as they were whether they haven't really found a good replacement as of yet bit of an interesting question but um yeah some spicy stuff no doubts to keep your eyes on as we progress but very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it hit on that like button and tells the youtube god this is a good video and i was like you should see it as well and i grow the competitive valorant community thank you as always take care and i will see you next time